Hello everyone, my name is Todd Richards and I'm a hand and reconstructive surgeon. I work at the Arizona Center for Hand Surgery in Phoenix, Arizona. And today we're going to be talking about carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is one of the most common reasons people seek out the care of a hand surgeon. And the uh, patients who have carpal tunnel syndrome present with a pain and numbness in the hand. And typically they'll experience this most intensely at night. It will wake them up from their sleep. And the numbness and the pain uh, originates from the base of the hand and primarily affects these three fingers, although it can also involve the ring finger. And classically, the patients will present with a story where they're woken up in the middle of the night and the hand hurts and the hand is numb and they have to get up and change positions and shake the hand to get it to come back uh, awake, if you will. What is carpal tunnel syndrome? Why does it happen? Well, the basic underlying problem is the nerve, the median nerve specifically, which we can see demonstrated in this picture, this is the nerve that supplies sensation to the thumb, the index, the long, and part of the ring finger. And this nerve, as it enters the hand, it goes under a ligament, which we call the transverse carpal ligament. And for various reasons, usually due to swelling and inflammation around the nerve or the tendons uh, that also pass through this area, uh, the nerve gets put under pressure and then uh, leads to the pain and the numbness. Patients can also experience pain that radiates up the arm, even up into the shoulder at times, and that's a very common complaint as well. Now, why does it happen primarily at night? <clears throat> well, as you fall asleep, your wrist goes into a relaxed position, and as the wrist is either placed into flexion or extension, then the nerve is placed under a greater degree of pressure, and that leads to the symptoms that people experience. Uh, people will also experience this when they are driving their car, so bringing the hands onto the steering wheel and bringing the, the wrist into extension. Talking on the phone, a lot of people will experience a numbness. And then uh, various other activities of daily living or um, hobbies or tasks can also cause the uh, numbness and the pain to set in. Uh, we tend to see this uh, most commonly as people get into their 30s, 40s, and 50s. Uh, it's very rare to see it in younger uh, people than uh, in people who are younger than that. And uh, the onset can be uh, somewhat insidious. It can start very slowly, and people will often uh, ignore the uh, the symptoms for quite some time. So, what is the proper way to treat carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, first we need to uh, ensure an accurate diagnosis and there are some physical exams and tests that we do uh, in addition to the history that the patient presents with uh, to confirm that a nerve conduction and EMG study are often uh, requested. Uh, you can also have an ultrasound done and uh, other diagnostic tests to confirm the uh, clinical diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. Initial treatments for carpal tunnel syndrome should be conservative, and typically we'll recommend that people uh, do a trial of wearing a carpal tunnel brace. Uh, this is a classic example of a carpal tunnel brace that is intended to keep the wrist in a neutral position, and these can be purchased at uh, local drugstores or off of uh, the internet or Amazon. Um, I don't find that one is particularly better than the other, but this is where we recommend most people start uh, treating their carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, in spite of the brace, um, the condition can progress, and some people are not tolerant, uh, or some people don't tolerate wearing braces uh, when they sleep, and I've even had uh, many patients that tell me that the brace seems to make their symptoms worse. So if a brace is not adequate initial treatment for it, then we'll often recommend a steroid injection. And this is a basic uh, image of where the injection is given, which is at the wrist on the palmar surface. 
and we use a fine gauge needle to introduce a steroid medicine along with some local anesthetic and, and place it just under the fascial sheath of the forearm uh, next to the nerve and most people will get some temporary relief uh, with the injection. It is a bit difficult to know how well the injection will work um, and for how long it will work, but it is also a good uh, initial treatment uh, before one considers surgery, uh, which in some ways is the ultimate treatment uh, for carpal tunnel syndrome. And I should also say that depending on the severity of the symptoms and how long they've been present, the uh, treatment algorithms may change. In other words, we might recommend that you proceed immediately to surgery and uh, bypass the injection or the brace and splinting uh, treatments. Carpal tunnel surgery is a outpatient surgery. It usually takes about 10 minutes and it's done in typically one of two ways, either through what's called an open approach or through a endoscopic approach. Uh, both surgeries are very effective and the long-term results for both techniques are excellent. I do both techniques. I do find that uh, if the endoscopic approach can be done, the recovery tends to be a little bit faster initially. Uh, this is a, a one example of uh, the endoscopic uh, instrument that can be used. And basically, a <clears throat> let's see if we can get a better example here. Um, so obviously, uh, disregard this here, but a small incision is made at the base of the wrist, um, and then the uh, endoscope is then introduced into the palm of the hand, which is where the transverse carpal ligament it can be found and released. And this is an example of uh, the images that one would see. This fibrous structure is the transverse carpal ligament, and this picture is demonstrating what the ligament looks like after it's been opened up. Uh, I also have a YouTube video demonstrating this surgery that uh, can be found in my video list. The uh, recovery from the, so uh, to back up a little bit, the surgery takes about 10 minutes and it's an outpatient procedure. It can be done either with the patient awake um, under local anesthetic or it can be done with a sedation and a local anesthetic or uh, it can be done with the patient completely under, asleep under general anesthesia. And um, the procedure after it's done, uh, the patients are placed into, in my, in my uh, practice, I place them into a bulky uh, sterile dressing. I don't put them into a rigid splint or a cast. And then uh, the stitches that are placed are taken out about 10 uh, to 14 days after the surgery. Uh, most people do not need formal therapy after this uh, procedure. Although, uh, in some cases, they can develop some troublesome swelling or stiffness that would ultimately lead to um, uh, requiring post-operative hand therapy. Uh, the recovery time uh, can be variable, and it depends uh, on the severity of the symptoms and how long the treatment was delayed. But uh, most people can get back to work within a few days on a modified duty or light work type schedule and um, the surgery is usually quite effective. The, the sentiment that I usually uh, get from most patients is that they wish they had done it sooner. Uh, it is important to have carpal tunnel syndrome treated in a timely fashion uh, because the longer that that nerve is placed under pressure, uh, the, the more likely it won't recover fully and that can also lead to permanent changes with atrophy of uh, some of the muscles at the base of the thumb and uh, therefore uh, neglecting the symptoms for too long can lead to irreversible damage uh, to the hand. So that's the basics of carpal tunnel syndrome. Obviously there's a it's a lengthy a topic and there's a lot of intricacies and details uh, which I did not discuss but if you'd like to reach out to me uh, if you have any comments uh, please uh, do so and I'll be happy to try to get back to you. Thank you for listening.